On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to KWTV, the one and only screencast that tunes stack into your way of life and lets that technology work for you instead of the other way around. My name is Nightwise. For the coming half hour, I'll be your host on KWTV 0025, reviewing the Motorola Zoom. Hey guys and girls, welcome to KWTV, another episode here in the brand new studio which we have uh, redecorated a few days ago and I thought it would be high time to talk to you guys about what's going on in the tablet world. This episode we have a special, we have a device that is not available in Europe as yet and has been given on a loan from the kind folks at PHC in Eindhoven. We are going to show you that the iPad is no longer the only iPad on the planet, that the iPad 2 is not the revolution that Steve Jobs claimed it to be and that there is indeed competition out there. We're going to take a look at that competition and going to take a look at a serious competition. We're not going to talk about these very cheap 99 euro tablet PCs that you can buy from China that run Android 1.6 and don't last longer than the average, I don't know, can? Uh, no, we're going to talk about a uh, different, well, more serious competitor for the iPad. We're going to review the first tablet that is sporting the Android 301 interface and we are going to see if it's really worth its, uh, its press and its hype and what they say about it. So let's review the Motorola. Let's keep the box in its way up. So much for dramatic entry. Let's review the Motorola Zoom. I don't know about you guys and girls, but one thing that really ticks me off these days is that people, when they see a tablet PC or a tablet device, as we should call them these days, they say, iPad. It's like a five-year-old. I mean, he sees a little chihuahua, he goes, dog. And then he sees a Danish dog, and he goes, dog. And then he sees like a terrier, and he goes, dog. I mean, everything, dog, dog, but they're different kinds of dogs. There is one dog, and there are different breeds of dogs. There is one breed of tablets and there are different brands of tablets and the fact that everybody goes like iPad iPad really drives me nuts so I was very happy when I got a chance to review the alternatives to let people see that look there are other things than the iPad I mean you don't call every car a Mercedes you don't call every mp3 player an iPod you don't call every tablet an iPad and you don't call every woman a supermodel although most of them are but there are some that are not so let's just keep, you know, our differences and our priorities straight and call what is to be called by the right name, by the right name. So we've got, see, got the box up straight this time. We've got the Motorola Zoom. This is a Verizon model that was imported by the kind folks of PHC and they have given us on a loaner. So this is the first time that we are actually reviewing a exclusive device. There's only one of these in uh, Belgium, I'm sure. There is probably one of these in Holland as well, and there are not a lot of these in Europe because uh, it's not really available here, and some of the technology inside this device does not uh, work on the European networks as yet because this is a 4G device. It is 4G compatible, but we don't have 4G just yet, so it's also 3G compatible. It comes with Wi-Fi, 32 gigabytes on board, a 1 gigahertz to dual core processor, dual core hardware, uh, and it comes with all kinds of meters. We'll talk about the meters a little bit later on. Um, what is nice about this device is that it has a bigger resolution than the iPad. This has 1200 by 800 pixels and that means that it has a higher resolution than even the iPad 2, who clocks off at 1024 by 768, if I'm not mistaken. So we are going to take a look uh, at this device that sports Android 301. The HTC Flyer that's coming out uh, a little bit later on still does Android 2.3, but this is the first one that really packs gingerbread. 301 uh, Motorola, uh, the Motorola Zoom, Android 3.1 only model available in Europe and it is a great device. We're going to take it. Oh, I appear to have dropped the device. Good thing the device was not in the box because otherwise we couldn't do a review. I mean, I still had you guys down for an April Fool's joke, so I thought, all night, why not go with it right now? This is it, the Motorola Zoom, super reflective as you can see if I just 
pointed at the eyesight camera, we will reflect into infinity. Let's see if this works. There you go. See that? So um, I don't know if it's really great for outside use, but we're going to take a good look at the hardware, uh, the software, the look and feel. We're going to compare it to the iPad. We're going to take a look at the Android operating system, and then we're going to put it back in its box, and we're not going to drop the box again, because that scares people to death. Everybody over at PHC who loaned us this device has probably had a big scare right now. Fooled you guys. We will take good care of your hardware, but we do like to mess around with your head uh, once in a while. That was just, you know, to say thank you for loaning us this device. So enjoy this episode of KWTV 0025, 25th episode. Is that an anniversary? I don't know. If it is, well, this is one hell of an anniversary gift, a device that's not available in Europe as yet. So smile as we review the Motorola Zoom. And I'll use this as the biggest camera uh, in the world. I can. Look, look. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. You smile, okay? Okay. Ready? One, two, three, and smile! The Motorola Zoom, not available in uh, Europe as yet. We have managed to get our hands on a very rare copy imported uh, from the States. It's a Verizon model by our good friends at PHC in Eindhoven, and we want to thank them for giving us the ability to review this little device. Um, Hardware-wise, one gigahertz dual-core processor, kind of the same like the iPad 2, and uh, up to 32 gigabytes of onboard space, which you can extend with an extra SD card. Um, it comes with Wi-Fi and 3 and 4G. The 3G SIM card is on the mainboard and has to be activated by Verizon. The 4G SIM card is something that you can slide in at the top. There are several uh, meters on board. I call them meters. They have a proximity sensor, an ambient light meter, a gyroscope, a accelerometer, and a barometer. A barometer. A barometer. 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 That's a hard word. Barometer. I don't know why it has a barometer. I think Zoom put it on there. Motorola put it on there just to really tick me off because I can't pronounce it right on. Because I don't know what a tablet device needs um, are to measure air pressure. I'm seriously out of my league there. But it has a barometer. It doesn't sound cool. But, you know, if you want to have a device like this to hang outside and see what the air pressure is, you probably need the onboard barometer of this device. 10.1 inch screen, 1200 by 800 pixels, 150 dpi, so pixels per inch. Uh, and it is uh, able to do 720p. HD. Um, it of course comes with Android 3.01, uh, has a 20, 20 watt uh, per hour battery, which makes that uh, what makes the device capable to perform up to nine hours on battery power. They say it's about uh, when you do it over 3G. They say it's 10 hours over Wi-Fi and MP3 playback will take you 3.3 days into the future when you're doing it on battery. 40 days standard by time. Video playback time should be about 10 hours. Now, these are, of course, the specs of the Motorola site, but, you know, that's what they say. Unboxing. Box is, well, it's not really an exciting box. Packaging of the iPad is indeed better than the Motorola does, but, you know, it's the inside that counts. Nice picture on the back side. There you go. Uh, giving an overview of the YouTube application, the um, Google Maps application, and, of course, the birds that everybody has known to love. So we'll open her up here. The downside with devices like this is, of course, the amount of reflection. Hello! So you can see me literally doing the screencast here. We'll go through the hardware a little bit. Connectors at the bottom, power, micro USB, mini USB, and dock connector. Volume buttons here at the side, uh, up top a mini jack for your headphones and the little slot for your 4G card and your uh, micro SIM. On this side it doesn't have any buttons and here at the back it has its on button, the speaker, the dual LED and the webcam. This is a 5 megapixel webcam. It comes with dual cam at the front. It has a 
a uh, two megapixel webcam. Cool thing about this baby is that it does do Google Chat, and we have tried Google Video Chat with this. It doesn't go very fast, but it does work. So, uh, what's next in the box? Booklets, 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 booklets stating you what to do, important consumer information, whatever. Oh, in a different language, whatever. And uh, then we have them in more. Uh, oh, yes, oh, yes, um, responsibility while driving. You shouldn't read ebooks while you're barreling down the freeway at 3,000 miles an hour. There's radiation, but it isn't as bad as Fukushima or Fukushima, but that's where, why the internal barometer is probably on there. And some more booklets uh, about how to upgrade it to uh, 4G, but that's all for the States. Uh, it comes with a SYNC cable, which wasn't included, but that's not too bad, and it comes with a charger. No micro USB charger, as you can see, it's a little tiny, tiny pin. It fits at the bottom. Um, comes with an American charger, and uh, luckily the people at PHC had um, a British charger to plug in. So I could plug in the American charger into the British charger, and then I would have to move to the Isle of Great Britain because we have European plugs. So I put the British charger in the European charger, and this is how I actually charge the device up to the power. Um, Weight-wise, it is quite heavy, so don't be surprised if you heft this baby out of the box and nearly knock down your camera. Sorry for making you seasick, um, but <laughs> it does feel very sturdy in your hands. It is, as you can see, quite reflective. It does make for a very, very, um, um, a very uh, expensive makeup mirror but it does work pretty nicely. So we are going to take a look at the Android operating system that is on there. We're also going to take a look at uh, the hardware and compare it to one of the most current iPad uh, tablets out there, the iPad Generation 1. And we're going to take a good hard look at the Motorola Zoom. The best way to compare uh, the Motorola Zoom to any other tablet that's out there is just, you know, to compare it. So you can see we've got the iPad Generation 1 on the left, the Motorola Zoom on the right. When I first had the Zoom in my hands, I had a feeling that it was a lot wider than the iPad. Surprise, surprise, it's not. It's exactly as wide as the iPad, but it does feel different in your hands. Then if we fold it up, you can see that the iPad is indeed substantially higher than the Motorola Zoom. Weight-wise, the Motorola Zoom feels heavier. Uh, I'll check the website uh, a little bit later on when I give you the technical specs if it actually is lighter uh, or heavier than the iPad, but it does feel a lot heavier. When I handed it to other people at the office to take a look at, that's the first thing they said. It feels heavy. Now, I don't know th if this is because it is actually heavier, but also uh, one of the things that does play a role is the fact that how you hold it. If you hold the Motorola Zoom in portrait mode, um, in landscape mode, it does feel nice to hold. I mean, you got uh, ample grip with your hands. You can really hold the device pretty sturdy in your hands, and it's all nice and dandy to work with. Um, it's not as high as the iPad uh, one on the side, of course, but it does feel quite sturdy in your hands. Now, however, if you uh, hold it in portrait mode, it is very convenient to hold, but because of the height of the device and because it's not that wide, I don't know why, um, it does feel different in your hands. Um, it feels as if um, the device is a lot heavier, and this has to do with the fact that where the device actually tilts on your hand. Um, because of the small weight of the, uh, the small width of the Motorola Zoom, this might be an issue also because of the weight. It does feel quite, you know, um, stressing on the wrists if you have to keep it in this posi position for a long time because the mass that sticks out above your hand tries to tilt the Motorola Zoom backwards and you have to hold it uh, in order, well, not to drop your tablet, of course, 